Tower, how you doing? Pretty good. How you doing? Good. This is like your your nine for you now. Yeah. You made me feel old. Yeah. <laughs> what, this, what, what is what is this time of year like for you? I mean, what, are, are you working on something specific? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think you know the biggest thing is even though you've been here for a while and you're a vet. You're also, you know, fighting old age. <laughs> you know, you're fighting things that your body used to do normally, and now you kind of got to get it going. Uh, you got to stretch more. You got to, you know, kind of do a pre-workout before the real workout. So, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's kind of different than the rookies and the second-year guys coming in. You know, you got guys fighting to get spots and fighting to learn the plays, and then you got the older guys fighting just to keep their body intact to be able to still, you know, do what you do. And so it's always going to be a battle, but it's always about finding different ways to overcome it. Got some time out there with Jackson. What, what are your thoughts of the rookie? Man, I think it's gonna be phenomenal, man. Um, you know, it's always hard just being able to get adjusted when you first come in. But I mean, the way that he runs routes, the way that he's understanding, the way that Sanjay coaches, like you know, the sky's gonna be the limit. I think he's gonna be really good at all the things that the Seahawks that we want him to be able to do. And so I'm just excited to be able to go out there and work with him. Um, you know, even though you're a vet, you can still learn from the young guys too. And so. Um, it's always being able to teach each other stuff and iron sharpening iron and just helping each other be better to win. How about D. Eskridge? So, so um, even with D, man, D show what he can do early on, even with the special teams. Um, even out here when D's running routes, like D looks explosive. Like he's one of the most explosive receivers that's out there, whether it's the start or whether it's the finish. Um, you know, he's coming back to the ball. He's getting himself open. Um, even the other day, we saw him. He ran a heck of a comeback. And Sanjay always coaches us about being able to run comebacks in a specific way. And he killed the DB, you know, um, running that comeback. Gino was scrambling. And then all of a sudden, you know, he turned up field. Boom, easy touchdown. So, I mean, D's very explosive. And he could do whatever it is that coach wants him to do. Pete Carroll was praising Gino last week about just kind of his leadership and taking over and things like that. Have you noticed a big difference in the year with Gino? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, of course, um, Gino, he's been here for a long time and, you know, he's found his way. He got the opportunity last year and now, you know, he's evolved. And he was always speaking up even last year, speaking before games, being able to talk to us on the sidelines like or in the game. Like that big drive we had to beat the Rams to go to the playoffs, he reminded us on that last drive in OT, he was like, it's just a football game. And sometimes you need to hear that because you get tightened up. You think every play matters. And though it does matter, but we're always better when we're just relaxed and we just kind of, you know, play like it's pickup. When you start getting tense and you start stressing out and you start trying to do a little bit too much, you start realizing, like, man, if I just relax and go play, like, we can be great together. And so, you know, it's those little things that he does that helps us to be able to be mindful and to win games. We're talking with Andre about, you know, this time last year, he's rehabbing, just trying to get ready for a season this year. He's healthy. You guys are obviously really close. Just what was it like seeing him kind of go through that struggle last year versus what you're seeing out of him this year? Well, I mean, the biggest thing is I think, you know, as we become vets, you know, like we say, um, you don't have to do everything at a fast pace, but you kind of get to learn how to tempo stuff. You learn how to be repetitive in the stuff that you do, and it can get mundane. But if you can learn how to be great at the fundamentals, you know, going slow and working your way up to full speed, it becomes like something that helps you along the way. And so I think like him being hurt last year actually helped him more than hurt him. Like, of course, nobody wants to be able to get hurt, but he was able to work on everything at a slower pace that allowed him to evolve as he got closer and closer to being 100 percent. He was able to go out there and play phenomenal, help us out down the stretch. You know, he, he had the game winning interception that gave us that chance to be able to go to the playoffs. And, you know, the fans see it, the the other teams see it. Like, it's the reason why he's Pro Bowl year after year. Tyler, what if anything you get out of these practices? You said, what if anything? Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying it's like, if anything? Uh, I mean, well, like I said, coming back out here, one, you learn how to be able to get back in shape. Two, you're able to be more team oriented. You're able to get used to the relationships. You're able to create new relationships, talk to the young guys, and you're continuing to learn how to evolve. You don't have to just wait until camp in order to feel like you got to be at your best. You can come here and you can still learn how to be at your best. You can still be able to pick up on things. You can still be able to learn how to create and how to be able to get more space. There's always ways that you can be better but, you know, it's also the mindset of somebody coming in. How do you approach this time? You know, and I think that's the biggest thing that determines if you get anything out of it or if you just hear um, just going through the motion.
Cleveland. Announced today the day the throwbacks will be worn this season. I know you've got chance. Versus Cleveland Browns. Yeah, you excited to wear those again? <laughs> excited. I wish we did a game one. <laughs> what do you think of it? Oh, I love them. I mean, we got to do um, the little photo shoot. And, you know, I'm thinking about being a model at some point in my life. <laughs> After that photo shoot, I thought I did a heck of a job. <laughs> Tyler, you, got, you obviously last offseason launched your, your real estate company. I'm wondering what the second offseason was was like for you with your, with your off-field ventures. And how do you balance that between that plus... Your, the work you do here during the offseason? Yeah, well, I don't think real estate is any different when it comes to balancing, like how I did school and football. You know, it's really just having that time management. Uh, you know, with the real estate, the second year was a lot more easier than the first year. And just continuing to learn how to grow, like I said, just in football, it's, it's really no different. When you talk about players, whether they have agents negotiating their contracts or whether you have players that's doing their own due diligence, looking at athletes, looking to see what they got, looking at their stats, looking to see kind of like the inflation that comes up. Okay, 10 a year equals 12 a year, you know, within two years. It's no different, it's just using houses. And so like for me, I get to learn kind of like the hectic piece that my agent deals with when he's negotiating my deals or other people's deals. And so it's just kind of cool, but I like it more than negotiating players' deals because houses don't speak. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. You, a house ain't gonna get upset with what it goes for, but you learn how to be able to work with the people. And for me being a captain last year, um, you know, being blessed to be that, I learned that you gotta be able to meet people where they're at. You gotta learn how to talk to people. You can't yell at people all the time. Some people can take that. Some people you gotta learn how to speak to more in a loving way. And you start to realize as an agent, you know, I'm here for the people who's selling their houses, best interest. And so it's really what they say goes. I'm just the one that's the middleman. I'm the one that's speaking on their behalf. And so it's kind of cool because you learn how to do that. And then it helps me come out here, be able to be there for my teammates as well. When you've got against uh, Witherspoon, what, what have you kind of seen out of him? Oh, man, I love him, man. I love the way that he plays. Um, obviously, I hadn't been able to go out there and actually go with the team. But just being able to see how he plays when we're out there doing um, a little faster walkthrough, when I'm watching him out there as he's kind of like you know doing his little movements like you can tell he knows the game you can tell um he knows when to sit when not to sit when to jump when to play it safe and the more and more he understands the plays and he understands the freedom that he has to be able to know when to do certain things and when not to i think he's going to be a really really great player what about uh, trey brown oh you know trey brown from the hometown so it's always good you know he's kind of in that similar position how quandre was when um, he came out of he came back from an injury and you know it's one of those things where it's tough because you got to be able to get back on your feet and it's hard to do that especially when you don't start in camp when you're not able to get going at the beginning of the season and so when he came back man he worked his butt off even with the athletic trainers they did a great job and now he's kind of able to get back on his feet he's able to be explosive he's able to trust his speed again and you know like this time he's starting to get back under his feet he's starting to realize kind of like the stuff because it's almost like he missed the whole year and so he's just kind of getting back into the groove and so it's good to be able to see him. If you look back at the season the totality on offense, what are some things you're going to be better at? Oh, well, I think the biggest thing that we could be way better at that'll help us out is just the screen game. Um, I think we were last in the screen game. I, I also seen you tweet a lot <laughs> no, <laughs> about us in the screen game, screen game, how we're in last place. So. Um, I think if we can be able to get that down to at least 20, it does wonders. You know, like the biggest thing is for us just knowing um, how to be able to be better at it, how to know, you know, how to catch it, how to be able to get upfield, trusting that the line is going to be there, everybody being able to do their part. And I think if we can get better at that, then it makes the offensive game better. It makes the run game better, the explosive game better, the short game better. But if we don't have the screen game, then we're kind of become limited. Anything else? Thanks, Tom. All right. Thank you.